Hello everybody, Camelia here, welcome to a new sewing tutorial. Today I have for you the Brielle jumpsuit from Designer Stitch and really far away and um, it's a really fun uh, jumpsuit to make. It has pockets, it's a true wrap here at the center front, the bodice pieces are really wrapping. So um, this is what you are going to see in this tutorial. It's a jumpsuit made for knits. So you have you'll need a fabric with uh, with uh, stretch. This one is made in a rayon jersey, and I have another one made in a little bit sturdier fabric. Uh, it's a um, jacquard jersey or something like that. So you could make this in a scuba knit, in a ponty knit, in a rayon jersey, in a cotton jersey. But you really need to keep in mind that depending on the fabric that you are going to use for the Brielle jumpsuit, your uh, crotch length might be different or um, the neck band you have to adjust a little bit. So these are things that you need to keep in mind. The jumpsuit as you see it and as you get it the, the pattern for, the ideal fabric it will be a rayon jersey, a really drapey fabric with a lot of stretch vertical and horizontal. So with that being said, uh, before uh, I go into the um, tutorial, first of all please check the chapters in the video to bring you to the different parts where you want to be. I am not following, following exactly the instructions order, but if you are uh, looking for something, you can find it in the list with the sewing chapters in the description of this video. And uh, you will see that I'm working on two different garments, on two different jumpsuits during this video. And that is because I started with uh, this one and something happened and everything what I uh, taped until uh, the bodice was finished did go wrong. Sometimes I did not uh, put the camo, sometimes was the microphone out. So in the end you have the tutorial, the bodice will be made for this version with uh, the white and navy. Uh, so the construction of the bodies, the construction of the pants part of the jumpsuit will be in this one and also attaching the bodies to the pants so at the end I will work only on this one. Um, something to mention is the fact that I'm going to use in this tutorial I'm using my sewing machine, I'm using my serger, the most of the construction is done with the serger and for the hems I'm using my cover stitch machine. Of course for hemming and also here at the part where the um, the free overlapping pieces are, you have a little bit of a hem. For all the hems you can use either a double um, needle or a zigzag stitch or um, you know your preferred method of uh, hemming knits. But I'm using my cover stitch machine. As I said for the construction I'm using mostly the serger. Of course you can sew this with uh, your normal sewing machine but you have to use a straight stitch or a double stitch. It's going to take a little bit longer time but uh, you don't need to worry about finishing seams because it's a knit and it's not going to um, unravel or something like that. Um, so that's about the machines. I am doing a few things differently than in the instructions like uh, construct, uh, construction of the pockets. Please check the chapters here in the video if you want to go directly to that. So I'm using a different method. Um, also for uh, binding the neckline I'm using a, a little, a little, a different method than the instructions. Just because it's, uh, I don't know, I find it easier for me and this is what I'm also sharing with you. So I'm uh, using only one layer of binding that is getting stitched and then turned all the way to the to the back of the garment and top stitch from the front I think is the method that is giving them at least amount of bulk here in the neckline and it's actually really easy to stitch and of course the band will have to be um, trimmed on the inside because it's going to be a little bit too wide but start with a wider band because it's easier to stitch if you are following my um, method and then I have my applique scissors I use these ones a lot uh, the, then the trimming is really really easy something else that I'm using a lot in, the, um, in this garment and it's something that is also mentioned in the um, instructions is of course uh, clear elastic and I have here the Fram Elastic T6. T6 is for 6mm uh, width 
and I'm using this a lot. You get to use this one in the arm, in the shoulder seam, you get to use it at the waist end because this is a very drapey fabric and it's pretty much heavy. I'm also using this in the, the crotch of the pants because being a heavy, uh, being so drapey and having so much uh, vertical, yes, vertical in the length stretch, you have the chance that if you're using a fabric like this, that your crotch is going to hang a little bit. So if you have that, put some clear elastic, you will see that also in the video. And uh, one on one ratio, don't pull it, just sew it together with your crotch seam and it's going to keep it as it should be. Something also, uh, something else that I'm using in, uh, in this tutorial is uh, a flexible, flexible seam tape. I have it here in two colors. Uh, this is a T15, uh, 15, 15. It's a one and a half centimeter wide. And I'm using this one to add here as a reinforcement at the pocket opening. And that's because I'm using this method where I need to cut a little bit in. Again, check the chapters, the timestamps on the video to take you to the pockets. And also you need a little bit of uh, fusible interfacing to add a little bit here the center front. And I also used a little bit, you see in the tutorial, at the opening here on the right side where the hole is for to allow the, you know, the wrapping. So those are things that you uh, you need. And something also very important is to read the sewing instructions before you are starting sewing. Read those completely also with uh, starting with the size, which size you should make, measuring your crotch, making adjustments if you think that the crotch is going to be too low on you. And um, reading all the instructions before you are starting to see if there are met if there are steps that you don't understand and again some of the steps i'm making them differently and uh, i am my order of construction is also a little bit maybe not following the instructions but at the end you get there so that's why i'm saying read the instructions to see if there are steps that you want to make different so this is it. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial and I hope you make your own Brio jumpsuit. I have already uh, five I think by now. One word about uh, the length of uh, the pant part. If you are unsure which length you like depending on the fabric and stuff like that. Again this one is the wider length. I think the best is to make and if you have the fabric make the longest leg with the widest leg also. And later, when your jumpsuit is done, you can really very easy decide on the length and also on the width of the pant. As you can, the, uh, the shaping is starting from the crotch and a little bit from the uh, from the hip here down. So then you can adjust easily your your jumpsuit when it's already done. So I highly recommend if you are in doubt of the length or the width. I I might make this ones even go back to the. Um, narrower leg because I have one version with a narrow leg and I like that one also a lot but to start I just made the longest and the widest and now I can go uh, to change it if I want. So I hope you enjoy my uh, tutorial again check the uh, timestamps in the video to take you to the steps where you need to be and uh, have fun happy sewing. So to start on the bodies I have here my pieces um, prepared and I have already some of the darts are already sewn. I have here my back piece. Let's see. This is my back piece. And as I said I made the sway back adjustment here. I used the pivot and slide method where you still keep the center back on the fold. And I so I'm only shortening the length uh, the center back length. And I have here the piece uh, cut on the fold, as I said, in one piece. But if you have a really um, deep sway back and you need to adjust uh, more than one and a half centimeters, let's say, you can, uh, I think the best is to adjust your piece with a slash method where you make like a dart here the center back, going to nothing to the side seam, and then cut your uh, back as two pieces with the center back seam. 
that's really really uh, the best solution for a really deep center uh, sway back and don't forget to add seam allowance and then your back of course is going to be shaped and it's not going to be on the fold anymore so here is my back piece I have uh, the darts already sewn and then of course I need to have two front pieces and as you can see my my front is a little bit worn out I did make already I don't know five of these uh, jumpsuits the most important thing of course you have to have your uh, bust dart on the fabric marked and the waist dart and also very very important the notch here at the center front your piece will have a little bit of extra seam allowance here so a instead of 6 mm it will be around um, 1.2 because you will have to turn a double hem for this piece the front is getting sewn only till here on the pants part of the jumpsuit and this one is going to be free for the for the wrap so here is my piece I did raise my uh, bust start point as I said a little bit and redraw the bulk of the dart by folding the new dart point or the new dart adding a little bit of paper and then through this to be a nice straight seam and here are my front pieces I have already sewn the darts in one need to be pressed and I will go on now to sew the darts in the second one and I'm going to show you some tricks on how to sew with this really stretchy fabric and pretty thin actually on the sewing machine before I go to do that I just want to say uh, what we need uh, further for the bodies we need to have the sleeves of course and I have here the sleeve this is the um, first uh, draft of the pattern that I got from uh, and from designer stitch so it has some other words on it than you have on yours most important is of course the shoulder uh, point here on the top of the sleeve that you will have to make a notch on your pieces or maybe make a mark or something and I make only a notch for the front because it's obviously that the other part is going to be the back always make if you make notches really short ones in a pattern like this with only six millimeter seam allowance you need to be careful that you don't go into the seam with your notches so these are the sleeves and i am making the as i said the the normal sleeve the basic sleeve with uh, i don't know so not the bishop of the other one and the last bits will be of course the ties the two ties for the jumpsuit for the wrap over and the last piece that we need is the binding for the neckline and um, my way to go is because I'm working if I'm making a pattern like this maybe I'll make it in different kind of, of uh, of uh, fabrics and this jersey is very stretched but if I use something like a stable knit like a ponty knit or a, a, a scuba that's not going to have so much stretch so I usually cut a piece of uh, um, fabric on the greater stretch of, of course but much longer than needed than the pattern is saying and uh, then uh, you see how I'm, I'm applying this the pattern is going to call for a double fold so you fold your fabric in two sew it with a six millimeter on the let's see take here the one of the front pieces so the pattern will call to fold the binding in two align the raw edges on the on the neckline stitch it with a six millimeter seam allowance let's see put a pin in it stitch it with a six millimeter seam allowance press it and then fold everything to the back and top stitch so like this press everything to the back like so and then top stitch it from the right side and then of course you have to be careful to catch the fold here inside I am not going to use this method I'm using something that I always use in this kind of uh, bindings I'm just going to put it single layer stitch it with six millimeters seam allowance turn everything to the back top stitch it from the back side and 
trim and you see that you get a really really flat um, neckline but of course you must be free to to use whatever method you want so and the binding and this is everything we need as pieces for the for the bodies some other small things that we need um, a little piece of uh, fusible interfacing and I will show you in a minute what we do with that you also need some uh, clear elastic and I'm using this one from uh, Fliselina, the Fram Elastic T6 and T6 is staying for 6 mm width and I'm going to use a little bit of toilet paper or whatever paper you want I'm going to show uh, you a little trick when starting to sew the darts and that's it and as I said, I'm going to use my uh, combination of my serger sewing machine and for the little hem in the in the lower part here of the of the bodies, I'm going to use my cover stitch machine. But you can use a double needle to keep the elasticity of that of this piece because this is going to wrap needs to stretch a little bit. Uh, you can use a double needle or a zigzag stitch or whatever. If you have a, a really busy print, you can totally use zigzag stitches. It's not going to show easily. And anyway, the, the wraps are coming over that piece. But I have the cover stitch machine and I'm going to use that to make my little hand. So I'm going to bring now my sewing machine and start uh, sewing the darts. So I have my uh, bust dart pinned and also my uh, waist dart. Both darts are already pinned here and are ready to, to go under the sewing machine. And I just want to say that I am going to stitch my darts. And again, this is the way I am doing it. If you feel comfortable to do it, uh, to stitch your darts with your, in your um, jumpsuit with a small zigzag or a straight or a stretch stitch, please do so. I am going to use the normal um, straight stitch. And I have here. I hope you can see. This is um, a test with the straight stitch and which is still very stretchy and I am building a little bit of stretch in the seam while sewing I am stretching a little bit of fabric but not maximum a little bit you can see it's stretching quite a lot and here I did a test with um, with a small zigzag and I think the stretchiness is kind of the same so I'm just going to use a straight stitch and because I have my throat plate on my machine has a pretty big hole here for uh, decorative stitches and stuff like that I'm going to leave it, I have also one with one hole but I'm going to leave this but I'm, I notice that if I'm going to start exactly at the edge of the fabric there is a chance that it's going to be sucked in so I'm starting always with just a little bit of paper under the presser foot here and let's see I have here a dart, which dart is this one? I'm going to start with the doesn't matter. I'm going to start with the waist dart. So I'm just putting the fabric a little bit on paper. This is toilet paper, you can use whatever paper you want. I had also the other ones with some print paper, printer paper. So I'm just going to start stitching. It's not really necessary to, to, to back stitch here, but I'm just going to start stitching. And as you can see, it's starting really easily. And if you want to backstitch, you can backstitch, but because of that paper, everything is going really, really smoothly. So I'm just going to continue stitching here. And as you can see, I'm pulling a little bit, but really just slightly. And even if the it's going to a little bit, um, I don't know if you think, well, that's a little bit funky and wavy. When I'm going to press this, it's going to... And then I'm stitching off the fabric and I'm just cutting my threads. You can tie your threads here or you could pull the, before, um, when you are at the end, pull the fabric a little, raise your presser foot, pull the fabric a little bit to the front stitch in the bulk of the fabric only and then cut your threads but this is going to be really okay I'm going to repeat and I have here the paper just going to take it out and because it's toilet paper it's really easy to remove and I have one dart more just going to put my iron on I have one dart more and let's see again I'm going to start on my 
cool thing about this machine is, and also on the, the other path, on the 720, if you put your presser foot one step, step more up, the dog feet, the dog feet, the feet dogs are going to uh, go down, and then you have really um, free play here under. So again, I'm starting a little bit on the paper, and I'm just I'm going to backstitch as I can do that pretty easily. And again, I'm going to pull just a little bit. And like this, my dart still has And so again, I'm going to remove this, pull it to the stitches. A bit of a mess, but this is going to get catched in the in the side seam. So this is my uh, dart now, and as you can see, it's still stretchy. If you need to have it that is stretching a lot, that means probably that you need to. Um, a bigger bodies and not so much. You cannot rely on the 100% stretchiness of the fabric. I think that's not really good for your for your fabric. So I'm going to put my sewing machine at the side, press my darts, and then I'm going to make that little hem on the here on the lower edge of the of the bodies. So I have here my darts, you see here another line, that's because I got confused on my pattern piece and I started to mark the wrong line. So I have here, I'm going to try to see if I can... A, okay. a little bit of steam first. And then, let's see, this is my bust dart going to, to press it with the bulk, you can see here, down. Like so. And that's great when you need to press a dart and you have a pressing hem like this. You can use the curves of the hem to press a really perfect uh, dart. So I'm going to repeat for the other one. As you can see, there is quite a bit of stretch in it. And I want to have the bulk pressed to the center front. And that's it. Now we need to make that little hand on the lower part of the bodies on the wrap part and before we do that and I will have to have both of those fronts now we need to use a little bit of that um, feasible interfacing that I said in the instructions you have um, it says that you have to stitch this is the center front I'm going to make a mark the pen that you can see so this is my center front notch here and in the instruction uh, it says that you need to stitch a few centimeters uh, on one side so you make a, a stitching line so this is what six millimeters so something like this you have to stitch you stitch this with your sewing machine because later you have to cut here as this everything is going to be the hem that is going to be turned and this is the seam allowance where your pens are getting to be attached. And here you stop sewing in your uh, waist with the pens. So to be sure that here is not going to happen anything like uh, ripping or stuff like that, I am just going to add a little piece of fusible interfacing. And I'm really talking about a really small piece. You need later a little bit more to add on the side seam. I like to do that also to reinforce that hole there. So it's really just a little piece. Of course the clue is to be sure that you have the glue part down. My markings are going away as this is uh, 
heat uh, erasable pad. So here I have one and I'll repeat for the other one. Let's see where it is. Thread. I think this one is not pressed yet. And this is the left bodice. Again the glue is on this side. Just a little bit I think is one and a half centimeter wide or something like that. It's just enough to go over that uh, six millimeter here where is uh, the seam. So now I have this and I'm going to stitch just a little bit on either sides of this notch here. So I'm going to stitch here and remember on this side it's only six millimeters on the longer side you have 1.2. You can mark it. So I'm just going to stitch that. I stitched here my, uh, I think you can, you can see even if it's in white. Here is a, a little bit uh, of stitching and I have here a notch. <coughs> and what I need to do now, well, I'm going to cut this thread of course. I am just going to cut to the stitching line. Use my big scissors, it doesn't want to work. See that? Only to the stitching line and not through it. That's perfect and I'm going to repeat for this one. Just going to cut some threads. Very annoying. Okay. So maybe you can see it on this side. I'm just going to cut to the stitching line. Okay, the next step is going to be making that little hem here. And on all my other versions, I forgot, because my pattern was not modified yet, I forgot every time to, to add this extension and I had it always only as a, a one layer. So you can fold, you can fold one time six millimeters and then another six or you can just fold like this, one time one and a half, uh, 1.2, and then you have, and then again to the fold, and this will be your hem. And as I said, I'm just going to press it for a moment. And as I said, you can stitch this with whatever method you want to have, like so. You can stitch it with a uh, double needle, with uh, zigzag, with uh, cover stitch. I'm going to unfold it, again because I have my plastic machine. I'm going to unfold it and I'm just going to stitch it. Oops, this is a little bit much here. You must be careful not to fold too much because here you do need to have that width in order to attach the, the tie in a moment. So I'm just going to measure here to see if I don't have, how much is this? This is a little bit too much, just a little bit lower, okay, and then this again. It's a little bit difficult for me because I have the camera in my face here, so I'm going to come with my cover stitch machine and make a little hem here. So I have my cover stitch machine here set up with some white thread and I'm just going to stitch of course from the right side and I have a small um, formation the, that the needles are really are close to each other, two and three. not worry about how it's looking on the inside. Stitching out. Okay, so this is how it's looking. I'm just going to trim away what is too much. It's really not a big deal. But this I really want to have in the seam here. Otherwise it can go uh, 
Arrival. So again here where is my little hem. This time I need to start from the other part. So I'm just going to stitch on. And this is how it's looking. So this is going to be, uh, if I really want, I want to, I can uh, trim that. So this is really stretchy and nice. And now we can go on with the construction of the bodies. So for the next step, I will have to bring in the back. And we are going to sew the front to the back. Always take care that you have the correct positioning because it happened to me to sew the right, uh, so to sew something like this, you know, to sew the shoulder seams and then realize that it's the wrong one. So put them right sides together. Let's see, like so. And what I want to do, I also want to add some clear elastic in the shoulder seams and I'm going to do that uh, in one step with uh, sewing the, the shoulder seams. I have here a little piece. Normally I'm working with the bulk of the elastic but this one was, uh, was the last one. So, and what I want to do is also, I'm going to turn this to have the shoulder seams here. I want to sew this from the back, so with uh, the back uh, bodies up, because I want to have that clear elastic in the in the back of the seam. Just going to put a pin here. Here is the other one. To be honest, I'm not pinning as much as I'm doing in the videos, but when I'm sewing for myself or by myself. So I'm just going to run this under the serger with some clear elastic to get in the back of the seam. So to put my elastic in the serger, I'm going to use, of course, that hole in the presser foot here. Let's take something smaller the hole in the presser foot, maybe you have also one, otherwise you just have to fit this under the presser foot. Lift the presser foot up and that hole is perfect for the 6 mm elastic. Oops, it's a little bit fiddly because again I have the cam in my face. Just fit it to that hole, presser foot down, take a few stitches and now I can with my bodies. I don't need to pull this or anything, it's just going to fit by itself. Uh, let's see, this is my test. So, uh, as I said, I want to sew from the back because like that the elastic is going to end up in the back of the seam. Six millimeter seam allowance all over the place in this pattern. Okay. And I, I'm not going to cut the elastic, I'm just going to come with the other shoulder from the back, of course, also. Only I'm sewing now from the neckline to the shoulder seam, to the shoulder uh, point here. Okay. Just going to cut the elastic. And this is what I have. My two shoulder seams are done. And the next part is going to be, as you can see, it's still stretchy, but it's not going to um, hang from my shoulders. So now I can press this and I can start uh, adding the binding. And for that, I am also going to use my serger. You could use, of course, your sewing machine, but with the serger, I find that it's much easier sewing, easier sewing and it's also uh, yeah, giving me a really nice uh, edge to fold everything when I need to fold it to the back. So I'm just going to press this for a moment.
press it as so and then press it to the back <coughs> to the back again here the elastic is not going to melt uh, on the packaging is saying that can hold up to 200 degrees my iron is really not so hot and I can this uh, teflon piece all right I see here a little bit of a discrepancy I'm just going to bring it back to the shoulder nothing to worry about okay now I'm going to grab my binding <coughs> and as I said I'm going to use a single layer binding if you want to sew it as per instructions to have a really uh, neat inside let's say with that folded uh, edge of the binding I'm just going to trim it later so that you see that it's really not uh, going to grab the other jumpsuit that I made. And this is the jumpsuit that you are going to see in the second part of the video for the pants and for the finishing adding the neckline, the um, bodies to the pants. This is how it's going to look now. As you can see it's really closely trimmed here but it's very flat from the outside, it's very flat from the inside and it's still very very stretchy. So for the neckline and the bodies, now you can do a few things. I have here my binding piece. You can cut it as per pattern. I strongly advise to make the a mark where you uh, or to cut it longer and then make a mark where the pattern is ending and then you can quarter this. You do the same with your neckline. Uh, why I'm advising to cut it a bit longer because then you have something to grab at the beginning and at the end. And then you quarter your neckline and put the marks from the binding on the bodies and you have to stretch the binding to fit uh, the neckline. I am not doing that because as I said I, I've sewn this uh, jumpsuit in a few uh, different kind of fabrics and every fabric is going to stretch differently. So I'm just using a longer piece of fabric and I'm stretching my binding as I'm going. So again this is the um, one layer of uh, binding application. I'm not using the double fold. So, and I'm going to use my serger. I have here my neckline. I'm going to grab my binding. I'm just going to start to give me a little bit of a hang here. So, putting the row size together. And also here, six millimeter seam allowance. Let's see. Here is my neckline, the beginning. Just going to start sewing. A little bit from the binding. And now I'm, now I'm on the bodies too. So I'm just going to stretch, don't stretch, so if you are trying to do this and you are not going to quarter your neckline, as I said, don't stretch the binding that is starting to curl and to lose its shape. So stretch it as you feel it, what is uh, giving. Just going to, I have my differential feet again on one step higher than neutral. Follow your neckline, keep stretching your back. And like this I'm going to go all the way around the neckline, again stretching the back, putting it flat on the body I'm here at the back. Don't forget to stretch the binding. And you see I'm shaping it. Be careful that the shoulder seam is to the back. And now I'm following the curve of the back neckline. I 
I think this is the easiest application of it. Oops. And as you can see here, I have a little bit of gathering. Again, my shoulder seam needs to be to the back of easing, let's say. And I'm just following here the neckline. And I'm almost at the end. And then I will have to work with my iron to press and steam this really nicely. The big difference is with uh, sewing this with the surgery is that the, the seam is going to stay really, really good. You need that in order to have it wrapping over your body. I bust. And I am at the end, as you can see. I don't need to stress so much. Well, I'm going to put now the serger away. Because the next step is going to be done with the sewing machine. Let's see where is my ironing board. Alright, so now I have this. This is how the back is looking. As you can see, I feel a bit of uh, easing and also here on the front. But this is going to get pressed. See? So I'm just going to press this as stitched first. It's really pressing a lot, but more giving it skin. And as you can see, the binding wants to turn already to the inside. And I should use my hand here, but. a little bit of steam and the next step is going to be pressing this to the back and you can if you want if you really want to have your binding showing that that's possible but then you'll need to keep in uh, your mind that your neckline is going to be six millimeters wider so let's say like this and then you have this visible but for this pattern the idea is that we are going to press everything to the inside so that you have from the outside a really neat um, and clean finish and I'm just going to put this flat on my pressing table and I'm going to press with the seam allowance to the binding and of course I think my pressing hammer will work even better in this case. So I'm going to continue pressing this, pressing it to the binding. Let's see. And stretching a little bit while pressing to have the fabric laying flat. Like so. And I'm going to meet you in a second back with holding this to the inside and top stitching. So I'm, I still have here my uh, extra length of the binding and now after pressing everything to the binding I'm just going to turn this. Let's see. And again, we want to turn that everything is on the inside. And I'm working from the back of the garment because like that I can see only a smidge, as you can see here, of the, of the bodies. And that's what you want to have. I don't think I'm going to pin this. I'm just going to give it a nice press, stretching as I'm pressing in order to to keep this nice and flat. I don't want to press any 
creases or um, gathers or whatever. As you can see, I can see just a little bit of the of the bodies. So I'm going to continue with this and I'm going to stitch this with a straight stitch on my sewing machine. And then we can trim everything. And the next step is going to be here it can be a little bit fiddly. You could you could work if you put this with a single layer, you could work with a with a thinner um, binding, but I think it's much easier to um, to trim this later than to work with a really thin band of uh, I don't know of a half inch or lesser than a half inch and then try to to catch everything. The next step is going to be, I'm almost done here, the next step is going to be um, preparing the side seams to, in order to be sewn, put the sleeves in, the ties and then you can go on with, uh, with the pants, with the pockets. If you are not making the pockets you skip that and you go directly to the side seams where you just off your pants, side seam and inseam. In we just stitch it instead of uh, putting the pockets in. But the pockets are are really a uh, great detail in this uh, jumpsuit. So now I have everything pressed. And I'm going to start stitching. Let's see, I'm going to start stitching from the other side, from here. I'm just going to start stitching on my sewing machine and I am going to do that from the back of the garment because like that I can control really how much I need to stretch as the binding is shorter than the bodies and I will have the at least uh, problems because sometimes if you sew from this from this from the front and you stitch and you stitch and you stitch and you forget to to, to stretch the binding underneath you will get some uh, really ugly uh, pulls here but you see that if you are stitching this from the wrong side you'll always be successful and you have a really neat and uh, flat binding. So I'm at my sewing machine and I'm just going to start stitching here. So I want to have my seam to the right of the foot and I'm just going to start stitching here. I kept my extra length of binding to have something to start on let's say and I'm lining the edge of the garment with my presser foot and I'm just going to uh, I'm just going to move my needle a few steps to the right so I can stitch with um, maybe a five millimeter seam allowance or six somewhere there not too wide, but just wide enough to catch my um, my overlock uh, stitch. So when I'm trimming, I'm not seeing that. So I'm just going to start sewing. Let's see. The problem with this machine is that it's putting the presser foot up every time I'm stopping. Don't really like that. All right. going to put my stitch to a tree and working just a few centimeters ahead of the presser foot I'm stretching this and actually I'm just stretching it to have it flat you see here it's starting to it's curling a little bit because it was east in the neckline so I'm just keeping it to be flat against the machine, not stretching it out of shape. And this is what I have. So later I'm coming and I'm going to show you how it went and just trim all this bit away.
So my neckline is done and this is how it's looking now. It's very stretchy still. What I want to do is to give it a little bit of steam and press. And I know it's still looking funky because of this extra binding here. But that will be the next step to trim everything away. this I can I have a few options I like to trim with uh, big shears or with an applique uh, scissor and let's see I think I want to try from here but you know you need to find the the the, the, the thing that is working the best for you here at the beginning I'm just going to let's see I'm going to Cut this a little bit away so I can see what I'm doing. And this is how it's looking now. I'm just going to cut it flush with the bodies, like so. And this is now ready to receive the tie. And for trimming, yeah, you can you can either use a big pair of shears and just always you need to be careful to feel what you are uh, cutting or I like to use uh, these ones like so and this is how I'm going to continue with the rest of the binding I'm going to do that off camera now to start on the side seams you want to have the left or the right wrapping over left so I have here my bodies let's see that is not twisted or anything of course as I said I still need to uh, trim the front line so the hole you want to have the hole for the wrapping so this is going to be the right over the left that means that you need to have a hole here in the in the right seam so to prepare a little bit the bodies for that hole as I said I want to have it always to have a little bit of strengthening here where the, the bodies is going to uh, or the tie is going to go in the bodies and I'm just looking for a piece of the interfacing that I misplaced and I have here a small piece of fusible interfacing and I'm just going to cut a bit of it and we have only six millimeter seam allowance so this is one centimeter I think wide again being careful that the glue is down it is a little bit more than I needed but it's okay just going to put it here going to press this and then we can sew and I am going to baste a little bit with my sewing machine let's see put the side seams together be careful so this is the right side seam as worn and I am going to baste from the waist the waist is six millimeter then I want to have around two two and a half centimeters for the tie and then a few centimeters more above like so and I'm going to baste this with a five millimeter or something uh, stitch on my sewing machine as you can see I basted I think it's around the four or five centimeters and let's see it's uh, I have a six for the seam allowance let's say and then I have around a two and a half for the for the hole and here at the end I did a few normal stitches these ones are going to go out for the tie and here you see when I'm coming with the serger I'm going to just stitch off so this I'm going to sew now from here to here to with my serger and so from where my 
basting stopped up and then I'm going to stitch of course also the other seam and the other side seam I just can stitch it closed all the way it's not necessary to leave anything open or interface or whatever so this is also going to go in the um, serger and it's going to be done and ready for the sleeves and the ties So I want to start sewing here from the armhole this time. I'm going to stitch off at the basting. Here is my basting ending. And I can put this thread here back or I just can let it like this and then I want to have the other seam and I'll show you in a minute how to treat that uh, hole in the seam So the side seams are done and I'm going to show you how to treat this opening here. So I'm just going to take my basting stitches out, leave the ones that they are 6 millimeters around here for the um, so now I'm going to show you how to treat this hole. I have here the basting stitches ending. I'm going to uh, take one thread out so I know where they are going to end like so and the next step what I like to do especially when having um, especially when having a hole like this I want to press this little seam open like so and then this is nicely pressed I want to go back and open the seam and I'm just of course I'm going to leave the first six millimeters unstitched uh, because I want to have the uh, let's see I want to have here at the uh, seam I want to have it uh, closed when I come with my pants so I'm just going to open this again I'll take my thread away here and give this a little bit of a press again and to make this stay in place because you know sometimes when you put the uh, the tie this little ends will try to sneak out I'm just going to put a pin and I'm going to put this on my sewing machine and make a really small hem to tack this uh, seam allowances down so something like this, this is now stitched and I can trim this really close or I can just let it like that. It's so going to trim this and trim all these strands and this is now ready to uh, be used and it's not going to catch anything out. I can give this a little bit of a press and then we can go on with uh, making the sleeves and the ties and the bodice is going to be done. We are almost done with the bodice of the jumpsuit. The next step will be to make the ties. And I have here one of the ties. I'm just going to sew oops, one of the short ends. And I'm doing this again with my serger. So one of the short ends is done. And then I'm going to sew the long edge of the tie, leaving the other short uh, end, of course, uh, open in order to, to turn this. And uh, then I'm going to sew the sleeves.
Also at this step I'm going to sew the sleeve seam, the underarm seam of the sleeve of course. And as I said I am making the basic uh, sleeve. If you make uh, let's say the um, that um, flounce sleeve there will be only a circle that you make a hem and insert it in your bodice or if you have the bishop sleeve you have to make the cuff gather a little bit uh, of the um, the lower edge of the sleeve uh, make the cuff so the under seam of the sleeve gather here the cuff in order to um, at the cuff at the lower edge of the sleeve in order to fit it in your cuff and attach the cuff and then you have to add also at the cap of the sleeve some is stitching in order to gather that um, before you put it in your armhole but I have the basic sleeve there is there are no gathers here there is no ease here. it's uh, only um, only sewing the sleeve seam and then this will be ready to be uh, inserted in the armholes of the bodies and the ties to be sewn on the continue with the other sleeve and the tie and then uh, I'll be back to put the sleeve in the bodice. So now I want to have uh, to put the sleeves in and I have here my sleeve. I have one of the sleeves. Let's see. And as I said I'm always marking the shoulder point on the sleeve and I'm always marking with one notch the front and obviously the other one is going to be the back. So I see here my front, let's see, trim this. So I want to match right sides together at the underarm and then I'm going to work from the inside of the garment. Let's see. Mostly you have to put the side seams uh, and the sleeve seam to the back but because I like uh, to have a flat seam here on the under the serger so that is going to go nicely. I'm just putting one to the back one to the front. Then I'm going to match the shoulder seam with that notch top notch on the sleeve here. Put the pin here too. And I'm going to, and because I made this one already uh, a bunch of times, I know that the sleeve is going to fit with almost uh, no uh, ease, just a little bit here in the shoulder. But that's going to be eased in directly by the machine. So I'm going to put this in the directly with the serger. Here is my machine. Let me find my pedal. And I, I'm going to work with the sleeve against the bed of the machine because like that the feet dogs are going to grab more fabric from the from underneath so the sleeve is going to be eased in my armhole if there is any extra fabric I'm not going to pull anything or stretch or whatever I'm just going to align my um, raw edges here the bodies with the sleeve and you'll see that it's going to fit really, really nicely. Again, I think the most important step here is to be sure that you don't put your um, sleeve backwards. So you have your front notch in the front and that you are putting the that top notch at your front. That's very important. And then you can just sew. I'm already at the shoulder. Take the pin out. And you know if you are cutting just a smidge like a millimeter is really not a big problem. 
But don't go cut one centimeter well. well. Put my... So my sleeve is done. I'm going to repeat for the other sleeve and then I'm going to meet you back to put the tie. To turn those, press them a little bit and then they'll be ready to be sewn on the body. So this is my sleeve. As you can see, this is on the inside of the sleeve. It's really nicely sewn. Here is at the top where the shoulder is going to the back. So this is nice. I'm just going to repeat for the other sleeve and meet you back for the ties. So now that the sleeves are in, the last uh, step on the body, with the exception of the hem, that is something that uh, you have uh, to do, I don't know, maybe at the end when you put your jumpsuit on and you can decide, especially in this sleeve, how long you want to have it. I'm going to use for the hem of the sleeves, I'm just going to use uh, uh, one turn. I do need to cut them a little bit because they are too long on me. And I will just turn them once. And then uh, from the outside, I'm going to use my cover stitch machine to stitch the hems down. Um, now I have the, the um, tie. And what I want to do, I want to give this a little bit of a press. And I will have to turn my tie. So I have here the end. And don't press it like this all over the place because then you'll make a fold on the wrong side. So only the, the stitching line. And then I'm going to turn this and you'll see that that is why uh, the reason that you need to have a stretchy seam here that the tie can stretch is also because when you are going to turn this you're going to pull a little bit. And I find it easier if I am pressing a little bit my the seam allowance on the short corner here. And even this one like this, although it's a little bit of bulk, I'm not going to trim anything because of course my seam is going to get undone. Uh, and to turn this, I'm just going to fold it a little bit. And then I'm going to push it into the, like so. And then I have here, I used to have a, a tool, like a chopstick, but now I cannot find it of course, so I'm just going to use something else, a pen or whatever, or if you have another kind of turner, you can use that. Just going to use this and I'm going to Continue with this until it's all the way turned. And then uh, when I'm done, I'm going to work the points a little bit. And of course, this will have to have to be also very nicely pressed. Otherwise, it's not going to look, uh, to look nice. It's going to be a little bit fluffy and I'm pulling only the I feel with my nails and I'm putting only the outer uh, layer and this is almost done and then I need to take my pen out of course so here it is just work it a little bit like so and you can see I need to pull it a bit okay now I need to take my pen out and I'm going to work those. You see, because I pressed that, this corner is already looking really nice and this one needs to have a little bit of help. And just going to work it a little bit out. Need to try not to pull the fabric. So this is it, now I'm going to press it, but the fact that I used, I pressed that seam allowance already, look how nice this looks. I don't even need to go in, I don't even need to go in with a pointer, pre corner 
preserve it, uh, you know, with that kind of... Uh, but you could use a tool like that if you have. And now the idea is to try to press this with the seam exactly on the seam or you know the best you can and I'm going to work this with my fingers let's see like this to work that seam and now I can press over the whole width of the tie and I'm going to continue with this and I'm going to meet you back with the how to sew the ties on the on the bodies of the jumpsuit so now we are at the last step, again with the exception of the hem in my case. I have here my bodies and I have of course two of them. Here is the other one. And here you have a pretty small seam. Here you have to get your tie. And let's see, I have here one of my ties and actually I want to uh, cut this straight. Let's see. I'm going to cut this straight like this and I want to put this end here what you need to keep in mind very important is that the seam of your tie is facing downwards and that the fold is upwards and you put the tie with the seam down right on the right side of the bodies and I'm going to match them here and even if I have here a little bit more than the six millimeters that can be I mean this can be a little bit stretched in the back I'm going to put a pin here and I know even I know that the seam allowance on my uh, bodies here at the tie is only six millimeters actually I'm going to sew it with the seam allowance that is giving me here where these two are meeting and that means that when everything is sewn oops, like so, let's say that this is sewn when this is going to fold it's going to give me here a perfect flushed edge and of course down, uh, here down also you see here that my fold is coming a little bit my seam is not exactly on the, in the middle so if you really want to be fussy about it you can bring this to the back and then give it a bit of a press so when this is open you cannot see the seam on the tie but you can work also that with, with your finger so again if you watch like this you should have the seam facing you this little seam of the tie and then and then you have two possibilities you can put this with a serger or you can just put it with your sewing machine with the serger of course you have the advantage to get this seam also finished in one time so I'm just going to run this through the serger and my the main point is to get with my seam exactly here so when I'm turning this I will have a flushed edge and even if it's not perfectly flushed you will see when you top stitch it you can um, handle it with your, with your fingers to make it sit perfectly so I'm going to do the same for the other edge I have here my second tie let's see how I did with pressing here again this is the lower edge of the body so I need to turn this Maybe I need to cut this also a little bit straighter. Plenty of length in this tie. So again, I'm going to put this stress a little bit to the side. I don't want to cut them because they are for my cover stitch uh, hem. And I want to be sure that it's not going to get unraveled till I stitch this down. So again, I see here a little bit of my seam of my tie. I'll put a needle, a needle pin and I see that my uh, bodies and tie are meeting here somewhere a little bit more than and if you want you know if you if you are not sure you are going to your sewing machine or to your serger just put a mark and you know that there is the mark where your needle needs to come so I'm going to run this to my serger feel free to put it on your sewing machine I'm to put it with a serger I need to have a bit 
Stoff. Okay, let's see. I have here one. And because I have that mark, I'm just going to sew from this side. I see the mark on my needle for my surgery here, and I'm going to align that with my. Let's see. What I have as you can see it did go a little bit off here and that's normal because of how the surgery is feeding the fabric but what I can do here now because this is an important step I want to top stitch the seam on the body side and because I have this mishap here I'm going to put the threads here to the back and this one's to the back and I'm going to put a pin here And this one here, I'm just going to tuck it in like this to help it stay in. Like so. So now I can go and top stitch this on my machine. And everything is going to look really really nice I'm going to repeat for the other tie and um, show it to you how how it's looking so this is the end of my tie I think it's looking pretty good and now this is ready to be uh, attached onto the pants Further you are going to see um, the pants tutorial with the pockets using the other fabric and also with the same fabric you are going to see um, inserting the bodies into the pants. So I'm ready to start uh, putting the pockets on my uh, pants and to do that I'm going to use another method than what is in the instructions. That one is a very common method you have the instructions for so I was thinking just going to do a little bit different to show you my preferred method of putting pockets so I have here my pockets but I'm going to take them a little bit away these are the I'm going to the pockets are going to be attached only to the um, or at this step at least to the front legs but before I'm going to attach them I'm going to put a little bit of um, um, yeah it's like fusible interfacing but this is a, a seam tape and the difference than other seam tapes is that this one is a is one that is flexible and it has a little bit of give as you can see so it's going to stretch with my garment I want to have it here I'm using black because I want you to be able to see and I have the notches for the pockets one is here and one is down here so I'm just going to cut this and you'll see in a moment why I need to have a little bit of interfacing because I'm going to have to cut a little bit after I'm putting the the first part of the pocket in the seam so I want to have a little bit of uh, strength in the pocket literally so this is one I'm not going to stretch it now because it's still warm and I have here another one with the two notches I'm going to put a bit of tape on it mm, yes and again always check if the tape is on the the glue is on the right on the side where you want to have it but you can also use some uh, neat fusible interfacing or something that it does stretch so this is like this and as you can see it's still very stretchy not going to stretch it a lot but the next step is going to be 
uh, sewing this the first pockets on the front legs and of course you have the standard application at this point where you have your pocket and you put it right sides together uh, let's see I have here a notch and I have here another one so I'm just going to bring it here and I'm going to sew again this is another method than uh, the one in the instructions please be free to use whatever method suit you and what you like this is the one I like so this is what I'm going to use and I'm going to put one more here so I'm just going to stitch from one notch hope you can see from one notch to the other one with my sewing machine with six millimeter seam allowance and I'm just going to prepare the second one too right sides together and my notches together and just put a pin here and I want to stop at the other notch that's important in this uh, in this method you really need to sew only between the notches and not further and you'll see later in the application why so I have here the things pinned and here I have the other pockets that I'll need to make the full pocket and this is the the seam band that I'm using as I showed you also in the beginning of the video so we put them here I have here again this is a vertical seam it doesn't need to have a lot of stretch so that's why I'm going to sew this with a straight stitch oh 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 if you're not comfortable with that please don't do it just sew it with your whatever stitch you want to have so I'm just sewing this at the six millimeter and I'm sewing with the stable part up I'm just going to take a few stitches and back stitch here and of course having that uh, seam tape is really really helpful I see that my seam tape didn't stick too well but I can press it again and I am almost at my notch just going to back stitch and cut my threads and of course I'm going to repeat for the other side from notch to notch uh, okay uh, let's see you know this one is such a nice fabric it's really nice to wear also to sew but I do enjoy it more wearing it than sewing it Again, six millimeter seam allowance. Matching my raw edges. And again, I'm sewing only on the right, on the front leg. And I have here the second notch. And I take one more stitch and back stitch. And take it out. Now, the next step. I'm just going to put the sewing machine away so this is stitched I need to have my iron while it's still warm a little bit let's see and I'm going to use my pressing hammer as it is a little bit smaller here let's see I have here my pocket I'm going to press it a little bit no, and my iron is not warm anymore okay it's always getting, getting on standby after a few minutes so I have it here and you can see it's from one notch to the other one what I want to do I want to cut this to the stitching line and not through it the same here and that's why I really need it that interfacing here on the leg to stabilize this cut then what I can do and I am going to do that 
I need to top to top stitch. I need to add stitch this, or to under stitch actually, not add stitch but under stitch. So I'm just going to do that. So very close to this fold, I'm going to run it under the machine. Let's see this one first and then I'm going to show you how I'm under stitching. I get that this is really safe putting the getting the iron on uh, standby but it's really really annoying actually. Okay. I'm going to take this one. And I'm pressing the seam allowance to the pocket. So, finally, put it away. And let's see. The dance of the sewing machine is still on. And I have here my pocket. Uh, let's see. So, the seam allowance of the we just sew, so this is how we sew it. The seam allowance is coming to the pocket, let's see. It's pressed towards the pocket and now from the right side always. I'm just going to, to under stitch this and I'm just going to under stitch it, let's say, maybe two millimeters from the stitch. So not too far and also not on the seam itself, but really not more than two millimeters. And for that, I'm really using a point here on my presser foot that I know that is really two millimeters. Okay. So I'm going to do that on both legs. Not going to backstitch, it's really not necessary. And the other one, let's see. Oh, I have it here. Seam to the pocket and top stitch and oh, under stitch it. And why we under stitch? To keep that seam or that pocket from rolling out. Okay, just stop before that notch or clip in this case, as you already clip it. And it's always helpful if we put a little bit of steam on it. Let's see. So this is how it's looking now. Our seam. Okay. And this is from behind, but this is going to get turned in a second. The second one, press it from the... Okay, that was pretty hot. Can put a little bit of lesser steam here. I don't want to burn my fingers. All right, so now we have the pocket, the first pocket is so on. And let me put this one that you can better see. So now I want to turn that pocket to the inside and because of the under stitching is really going to turn by itself. So this is now turned. I want to have my little cuts here very obvious. Let's see. Turn everything nicely. Here too. Let's see, this is nicely cut and this is nicely cut. Or almost. And if it's not turning, that means that you really need to cut a little bit more. Don't cut the pocket, don't cut through the stitching line. Just to it. Okay, so this is now turned like this, really nice. Okay, 
Now I will have to press this a little bit. So this is going to get pressed. Okay, so that's what that understitching is doing, is putting a really nice edge that the pocket stays really nicely inside. Now I need to have my uh, other two pockets, which I lost here. So I have one pocket here, I'll do later also the other one. You don't need to see me doing this double. And now what I need to have, I need to have the pair of this and that will be this one so that I have two pockets or the pockets two pieces right size together. What I need to do now is to sew the two pocket pieces together and to do that as you can see they are right size together I'm just going to use my pins I'm just going to pin this in place, only in a few places, so I'm going to go from here all the way around and as a last step I'm just going to baste it so it's staying in place here at the waist, here a little bit and here and just to show you where I'm going as you don't need to see me stitching this with my serger so I'm just going to stitch around the pocket and then baste in place here down from the notch down the side seam and this bit a little bit here and what I get I get a leg with the pocket already constructed here Let's see and when I come with my back leg I'll be careful to sew the side seam here all the way down but being careful that I'm not catching the pocket and you see what a nice clean and also bulk free I find type of uh, side seam pocket you'll have so I'm just going to close the to pin the other pocket also and stitch it around paste it and I'll be back with uh, putting the legs together. In the previous uh, step I finished the pockets, I basted them and now I have them here pinned together at the front leg of the jumpsuit, pinned to the back leg of the jumpsuit and I just want to say one thing that um, normally I'm, so I'm going to sew the inseam and the outseam of the pants, I'm going to uh, sew them with the serger. But what I want to say, normally I don't pin a lot and especially, uh, I don't know if it's a fabric that, let's say like a stable knit or something like that, I'm not really going to pin. But in this case, when the fabric has a lot of um, horizontal and vertical stretch, I think it's important to pin because when you are working on the serger, everything is going to hang and that is going to make it a little bit difficult to match the seams really nicely. 
So I think it's important to pin here and there before you start you start uh, sewing and also I as you can see I'm using pins and not clips because the clips can get a little bit uh, heavy on the fabric and again pull it and you know you get distorted seams and stuff like that so I think pins are the way to go and then pin a pin in seam pin out seam of the pants and run this through the serger and just one little uh, just going to try to zoom a little bit in let's see here as you can see here is uh, the pocket the two legs are pinned and if you use the application that I did which uh, means that your pocket is going to be uh, attached only to the front leg at this step you have here the back leg pinned to the front leg and you feel with your hand where the seam is here where the the, the thick seam of the pocket is so you'll pin only through the two layers the pocket bag that you just added in the uh, previous step and uh, the back leg and as you can see here where I have that basting here is my my pocket is uh, where I have the basting the pocket is ending here and then here is the pocket opening and then you can see here I have the other uh, part of the basting where my pocket is uh, ending here so this is a little bit of uh, a fuss here that you need to be careful not to catch the pocket edge but you really feel it because it's quite a thick uh, edge there inside and to be sure that you are starting starting and ending correctly there you can pin it and then you can open it and check if everything is going to get catched I know it's difficult to see in my print but I did check and everything is in and look the pocket is already falling really really nicely in that seam you can see it just here so I'm going to run this through the serger the basic uh, six millimeter seam allowance all the way around all the way around the inside and the outside seam and then I'm going to meet you back to sew the crotch seam and then we can put the bodies I only want to add that I am always sewing from the hem up and also I want to add that uh, in a stretchy jersey like this I am always putting my differential feet one step higher let's see and one step higher and uh, the normal stitch two and a half around on my serger I'm just going to sew this keep these seams together and pull the pins while you are sewing so I have already one leg done and I really wanted to uh, film how I am sewing there around that pocket opening so I have here my other leg just going to match my seams a little bit to find a better place to Again, if you have a serger, I think it's, it's having a serger is really, really great. Okay, I'm almost to my pocket. And why you want to put your differential feet a little bit higher, you know, the thing here on the on the right because then if you see that your fabric is starting to wave a little bit after your uh, you're sewing it be behind your presser foot that means that the fabric is getting a little bit too much stretched and you need if you put a differential feed a little bit higher it, you see that it's starting to to not to gather but you know it's not going to be stretched as much So your seam is going to look much uh, flatter. Okay. I 
I try to keep uh, my work on the table, not let it mud. And I'm coming now to my pocket. And the nice thing with the basting, especially I use the dark thread. Now, even if you are trimming just a smidge, it's really not a problem. As you can see, my pocket is starting here. So I'm going to do my best to come with my needles all the way there. I feel the, that ridge of the pocket, but I still need to go a little bit. And now I'm off. And to be sure that I'm not going to catch this pocket, I'm just going to go here inside inside the garment and I'm going to pull that a little bit away from the presser foot that I can feel here that I have only the two layers of fabric. I'm going to stitch this and then when I'm coming at the other basted point here up I am going to do the same so I still keep the opening of the pocket I keep it a little bit away Let's see, I'm almost here. I see here my basting, so here my pocket is ending. I have here another pin. The layers are together. Oops, so we can take a look. As you can see here, the beginning and the end they are nicely secure and now I have a really flat pocket and you will see in the garment how how nice it's looking so this is done uh, let me see I have only the inseam here and then uh, I'll be ready to put the crotch together I have my legs here I'm going to turn one inside out to be honest I almost never I'm not going to say never but I cannot remember the time when I want to sew uh, the crotch and the inseam or the crotch, the inseam in one time. Most of the time, 99.9%, I am sewing uh, the legs uh, separate and the, the crotch in, uh, in, in one time. So the front and back, I'm not sewing the back and the front and then put them together. Uh, let's see. So I'm going, to, so what I'm doing here, maybe I should uh, explain, I have one of the legs um, inside out, I have the other leg at uh, the right side out, as you can see, and I'm going to put the, the, this one, the one that is right side out, I'm going to put it in the, the other one. And what I want to do, I want to match them at the crotch first. I hope you can see, I think you can see. I'm going to match them at the crotch and of course uh, up above at the waist. And I'm going to do something differently. I came out, uh, came up with this when I uh, sewn the first uh, pre-test, let's say, of this garment. Let's see, this is the back crotch. No, this is the front, this is the back. I want to have the seam allowances to the back, but sometimes if I'm using a very um, a, a, a fabric that is a little bit too bulky, I will put one to the front and one to the back. I like that better. I have here a bit of a shifted seam. It's not a big deal. I'm just going to trim it away. So now I have two equal seams. Yay! Okay, I'm going to put a pin here. You can put both seams to the back or whatever you find you like the best. But because I don't want to have a really shifted seam, I'm just going to put them like this and my surgeon is going to be more happy to sew this uh, that point. So I'm just meeting them and walking the edge nicely. And I'm going to sew this 
course with my serger but what I'm going to do is I'm also going to add some clear elastic in the crotch seam and why I'm doing that now let's say that I was sewing this with um, with a stable knit like a ponty knit or a scuba knit and the big difference is comparing with this fabric is that those fabrics they have most of those uh, stable knits they don't have so much vertical stretch so when they hang then they are not going to drop so much but this fabric and I'm not going to stretch it again <laughs> this one is is very drapey and because of the weight the, you have the chance that the crotch is going to go all the way to your knees I had that in a in a in another jumpsuit and unfortunately for, for, unfortunately for me I did not came up with that side with this idea at that time so I had to adjust a lot to to get it a little bit higher the crotch but in this case I'm going to add as I did for the um, shoulder seams some clear elastic in one pass with the um, uh, with sewing the seam the crotch seam what I want to say is if you are not sure if the crotch is going to hang a lot on you because of the fabric or whatever you can also put the elastic later so you can or you can baste this try it on and then you can decide if you need the elastic or not but the idea is that you don't need to stretch the elastic at all you just let it one by one as it will sew normally with your with your seam and actually it's really the same application as with the shoulder seam so I'm just going to fit the elastic put the presser foot high fit I will put the differential fit back to zero because I don't want any gathers with this elastic so I'm going to fit it here through the hole in my presser foot I'm using the tweezers because it's making everything much easier put the presser foot down I don't know if it's all the way I need to help it a little bit more there yeah now it's in so I'm just going to let the elastic to get uh, pulled by the by the machine so I'm not going to pull it or whatever now I have my crotch here and I'm really just going to to sew this take my pin away I'm just going to so I know that this is going to drop a lot on me so that's why I'm putting the elastic at this step and I will show you in a minute how that looks but it looks really exactly the same as with the shoulder seam So I'm using quite a bit of uh, clear elastic in this project and I will have a little bit more in the waist can see I am helping the elastic that is not getting caught here because I really don't want it to get stretched and I am going to continue all the way the, uh, to the other waist front I think yes I started apparently from the back it's really not important where you start So now I can trim my elastic Oops. I'm going to show it to you what I did okay so let's see this is my uh, crotch seam now I'm going to give it a little bit of steam where is it here it is 
it's looking a bit funky now but everything is going to be steamed and it's going to look really nice so after I'm going to steam this my iron is again on break apparently I am going to bring the bodies all right so now we can put the bodies to the pants and the jumpsuit is as good as done only the hems but for that you have to put it on and decide exactly how uh, long you want to have the sleeves how long you want to have the legs okay now what I need to do is putting this uh, I need to put this right size together so I'm just going to bring my center back to my center back notch right here like so going to put a pin and this um, seam I'm also going to now I'm putting the side seams together this seam is also going to be sewn with the serger and also here I'm going to put um, clear elastic in the instructions um, there is a note at the end I'm going to put the bulk um, to different sides it's a really busy print you really cannot see if you are making this in a in a solid color I do advise to put them on the same uh, to the same direction but here is not necessary and again my surgery is happier if you're sewing like this I was saying at the end of the instructions you have a note that if you find that your garment is starting to hang from your waist because it's too heavy again this is the other side seam and also here I'm going to uh, is it a side seam yes it is I'm going to offset them the bodies to the front the uh, leg to the back just because there's a lot of bulk here because of the pocket uh, fabric that is also there in that seam um what i was saying you find a note that if you find that your garment is hanging depending again on the fabric on the weight of the fabric you can add um two and a half centimeters wide elastic stitched on the uh, seam allowance of the waist now because i know that there is a chance because this this fabric is pretty heavy that is going to hang I'm just going to add some clear elastic directly at this step when I'm putting the bodies to the to the front or the bad the bodies to the front but I'm saying the bodies to the pants let's say so I'm going to put it in one step as I did with um, with the crotch elastic and now I'm coming here where I have the little hem in the bodies and this is my pants so I'm just and this is the center front of course so my notch is coming exactly at the center front I'm just going to put a pin here you see my cover stitch is going somewhere else but it's really not a problem because it's coming in the seam and I have the other side it's also coming and I am going to put the bulk of these darts all to one side but that's something that you can always do with your uh, with the bulk of your darts to try to get them a little bit you know if you have a lot of bulk otherwise the seam is going to shift and it's going to be a bigger mess uh, let's see so now I have the other part and also this one is coming exactly to the center front here so I'm going to carefully bring it here this one you need to be careful that needs to go a little bit away you don't need to decide now left right you did already decide because you have a hole in the right side seam but here you only need to they only need to meet for further than that they don't need to uh, overlap or something so I'm just going to put this thing down and I advise actually let's see that if you think that you have problems with this my seam did shift a little bit just going to trim this to the same level um, I advise you to baste this first with the sewing machine and then start sewing with the serger so this putting it a little bit down I have here a lot of threads I have the other cut here 
I'm going to let's see to put a pin here also oh, those pins are so thin but they are so working so nice so this is exactly where I need to come with the serger uh, with the needles of my serger so if I'm thinking well you know everything is going to shift like crazy I can baste it with a few stitches by hand or I can take my chances and put it with the serger or I can put it with the sewing machine put this pin again so I'm just going to go with the serger and see it from there you know because I have this busy print it's very easy for me to take some shortcuts but that's something that you will need to decide for yourself what you want to do so I have here the waist is uh, pinned and I really want to put my clear elastic back in the serger so to do that I'm going to do the same Let's see, I'm going to cut it on a bigger angle and I'm going to lift my presser foot with my tweezers, put it in, presser foot down and now I'm ready to start sewing and I'm not going to start sewing at the center front of course, I think I'm going to start sewing somewhere at the side seam or let's see and I want to sew with the bodice up because I really want to see what I'm doing here when I'm arriving there so I'm going to start somewhere at the back okay Put my presser foot up just against the needles to the needles I'm just going to sew again I'm not going to pull anything or whatever As you can see the darts are already starting to do their own thing okay I'm almost coming to my side seam hole yes let's see and I'm thinking now you get the elastic on the on the seam here so depending on how you want to have the seam if this is something that you think is going to bother you that the elastic is on the on the seam of the bodies maybe you should you could shift but then you are not going to have visibility on what you're doing there at the center front so take that into account I don't really care about the elastic on which side of the seam it is something else that you need to take care is that you have those uh, ties hanging around okay and I am almost to the center front let's see and of course everything get got out here from my pins be sure that you have enough elastic okay let's see I need to put this back and I need to be careful that it's exactly at the center and they are meeting each other and I'm going to move my pin a little bit like so elastic again to the front The thing is that you need to be careful that you leave, you leave no pins here so I could also put another one like so in order to take these ones out and let's see and I'm following I have here a little line on my presser foot and I'm going to follow that where I'm coming with my seam I think I need to lift up as one of the all right
and if I'm not going exactly I can go with my sewing machine to do a few extra stitches there but I think I think I am pretty perfect okay I'm going to continue to the other side and we'll take a look in a moment So now I'm at the end where or where I started let's say just going to cut this a little bit and this is enough cut the elastic and all right so let's take a look as our jumpsuit is as good as done unless I forgot something again <laughs> so this is the waist with the elastic I'm going to give it a nice uh, a steam before I'm pressing anything and here is my hole in the side seam and of course I used here black thread that is better visible on the cam but you could use you know something that is really matching your fabric and you will not have such a big mess like here so this is the center front and this is where my oh, let's see this is where they meet and as you can see they meet perfectly and if I am to open this let's take a look I have some threads here so I think this looks really really nice so it's going to be right over left as you can see and everything is going to fall really nicely so now the next step is of course to make the hems and everything is done if uh, you did not put elastic now and you put your garment on and you think that everything is starting to drop a little bit come back with a piece of elastic and stitch it just to the to the seam allowance and not in the not that is visible on the garment and I see here that I have some basting from the pockets that I'll have to take out but that's not a big deal I'm just going to take a few stitches out and it's going to be fixed so now I'm going to make the hem and I will uh, show you my final uh, my final result and of course I'm going to show you the other one also that you've seen the bodies in the beginning of the video you know and I have now two new jumpsuits so I'm going to meet you in a second with uh, my final garment So for a few conclusions on the on the jumpsuit, as I said, I uh, uh, hemmed it with uh, my cover stitch machine. I did have to take a little bit off from the sleeves and also from the legs. I did take three or four centimeters even because you really need to put it on completely with your bodies to see exactly how it's, uh, how it's hanging. So again, I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. It was a little bit crazy with the different uh, fabrics and the different uh, uh, garments I was working on but in the end uh, actually it's pretty straightforward I hope you enjoyed my um, different approach on uh, putting the side seam pockets and if you have any questions don't forget you can ask me here in the video uh, under the video and um, I would love to see your finished garments if you make one uh, real uh, jumpsuit or maybe a few uh, using this tutorial please I would love to be uh, tagged on at Calcedonia Sewing on Instagram or on Facebook and then I'll uh, find you for sure thank you so much for watching don't forget to subscribe to my channel for future sewing pattern reviews and tutorials and give me thumbs up if you like the video thank you so much for watching bye